Hey, it's Bitty Penny. Welcome to my channel. Today I am making a mass make for junk journals. It's something you can make ahead and use any supplies that you want. It's to cover white pages and I'm really loving it. I'm going to show you three ways to make it. Now I am using these products from Antonio Makes. I am on his creative team. And when I saw this kit right here, I just knew it was perfect for this idea because it has a whole lot of uh, pattern papers and tags in it. Here is the code on the screen. I figured out why the code wasn't working. I know that a couple had had issues with it and it has an I instead of a Y, but we will get that fixed. For now, just use that code and you will be able to find or get 10% off your order and everything will work out. Okay, so you guys have probably seen my autumn journals already and I base them off the autumn butterflies and I just knew that this kit would be perfect for those journals but the this idea that I want to share with you guys today is really an idea to cover white pages and journals. I also think that it's a great idea to use to make a head like if you have a neutral paper like this which this was this past Friday's freebie then you know if you have a pretty neutral paper then you could make these in advance this is another project I've made um, with uh, the autumn butterflies kit as well so I'm going to look through here now these journals are pretty much done I'm going to show you like sometimes I cover my white pages with book pages and that's what I did with a lot of pages in these journals. So, um, you know, I, pa I backed this plain patterned paper, you know, it was single sided patterned paper and I just backed it with book pages. But the idea I'm going to show you today is a very decorative way of doing that. You could start with book pages if you wanted, if you had some that were about the size. Now, this idea works for me because I typically make all of my journals about the same size. Um, and so what I'm going to do is take this eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I'm going to trim off the parts that aren't fully printed. Now I printed this borderless and I printed it to fit to the page. And now I'm trimming this down to five and three eighths because typically my journals are eight and a half tall and they're five and a half wide. So all I have left is that little bitty strip. These are gonna be the base of the project today. So basically what I'm doing, and you can vary your um, dimensions to fit the size journals that you make, but I'm making a base layer that is just slightly smaller than my pages, okay? And I'm gonna make six of these because I wanna make a you know, lots of variations. Now I picked this kit for this project because it had ephemera in it. It had a lot of variety. Um, you know, it went well with the projects that I was already working on. But I do love this idea um, also for like scrap busting. Let's say you have a bunch of scraps. You could definitely do what I'm doing here with your scraps. Um, and like I said at the beginning, with more neutral patterns, you could definitely do this as well. Um, and you could prep your bases and not fully decorate them if you're mass making and making these in advance. Or if you're like me and you make six journals at a time, then you'll need to be mass making anyway. So I trimmed these out and the holes were a little bit bigger than my hole punch. So I'm just gonna show you a few ways to deal with that. You know, obviously ink is one way to deal with it. Um, so I just inked up that part and then the front and the back. Very simple, we all know that, right? Um, so that's one way for me to kind of correct um, that extra white space. But then also I have some hole reinforce reinforcers. Now mine came from Target, but I've seen them at the Dollar Tree. And what I like to do is get a sheet of them 
and use my ink and I ink blend whatever color I want at the time. So right now I'm going to use this dark brown slash black dirty brush. <laughs> so this is not like one color. This is like 50 colors <laughs> blended together. But I'm going to use that to color these and cover up the holes. So that's another way. And if you didn't want that distressed look, so here's an example where I haven't distressed it at all. You could just put the hole reinforcers on it. That's also another option. Maybe you could just distress the back and not worry about the front. Anyways, I just wanted to give you some ideas there in case you have a hole punch that's smaller than the hole punch that is designed in your printables. Okay, I also loved that this kit came with um, these envelopes that were different sizes and super cute. I am going to go ahead and just distress these um, right from the get-go <laughs> and have that done. And I did decide to do the front and the back. I hope you guys will stick around for this whole video and that you enjoy the ideas that I'm going to be sharing with y'all because I had an absolute blast making these. Okay, now I'm just going to fold these up and I'm just following the cut lines um, that were there. I mean, when you cut them out, you basically are cutting out like a square and then little... Um, divots and then this one you just have these tabs just two tabs on the side really easy envelopes and then you fold that bottom part up and then this top part down so these envelopes are super easy depending on the paper that you print on you know you might want to score them use a bone folder to get your edges burnished well and creased well you could also cut off those side tabs and make this a fun flip like journaling spot. So it doesn't have to be an envelope. I'm not even sure that Anthony, Antonio denied, uh, designed it that way. Okay, this piece of paper y'all is my favorite out of all the papers in this pack. <laughs> I need to print more. Um, but I'm cutting this down to five and three eighths as well. And now, I'm gonna cut this into one and a half inch strips. It doesn't matter the dimensions. The reason the width matters is because these are gonna be pockets on those bases that we cut, but the height doesn't matter. You could make these two inches, one inch, whatever you want. Okay, this piece of paper, um, I just kind of randomly cut, but it ended up being four and a quarter, if that matters to you. And then I'm doing the five and three eighths, and now I'm gonna score it half an inch on the side that I want to fold on, okay? And so this first project I'm sharing with you or the first version of this project is the easiest. So I'm gonna take those pieces that are four and a quarter by five and three eighths, scored it half an inch. And these are basically just gonna be built-in flips. Um, I left this part, this project, um, super simple. So I'm basically um, using some double-sided tape here that's very permanent and I'm just going to go ahead and tape that there on the back side and now I automatically have a page to cover a white page in my journal and um, it'll have a flip on it. So it already has like some interest to it, but it's not overly decorated. It's a great jumping off place. It's just something that you could put in your stash. You can make, you know, 20 of those super fast and just have them. Now the next two versions I'm going to be showing you are much more decorated. They're more detailed. Um, so this is like ideas if you're working on journals, you know, and you already know what your theme is going to be and you're working within your theme of your journal. You could keep these basic, of course, like you just stop short of adding the details and you could mass make this as well. This one here on the left, the first one that I'm gluing down, I'm going to make these top two bands belly bands. 
So I'm only gluing on the sides, the left and right sides. And these are belly bands. That top one was crooked and bothering me. Luckily, I saw it in enough time to correct it. This bottom one, I'm going to glue on three sides and it's gonna be a pocket. I really like to have like a pocket at the bottom of a page like this so that when I put things in the belly band, it doesn't slip out of the page. Now this page here on the right, I'm gonna make all three of those bands pockets. So all three of these are gonna be glued on three sides and they are gonna be pockets. I think my favorite to work with is actually the one the variation on the left the one with the two belly bands and the one singular pocket and the reason is is because that top pocket on the right hand version you can only put like little shallow things in there or else they'll stand out at the top of your journal I mean that might be a look you're going for but I think that there's a lot more variation on the left side. I did not burp. My throat just made a weird sound. Sorry. <laughs> ah, geez. Anyways. Um, so now I'm just playing around and I'm going to show you all different ephemera pieces. So I'm going to put in some of the tags and I'm going to put in the envelopes. And I felt like this page really needed some contrast and it needed some different colors. So instead of using those orange tags, I love that this kit also has like these blues and gray. And I thought that was just lovely. This was a free printable like two weeks ago. Um, and here are some other pages from that kit I was showing y'all. And I'm going to use a little bit of all of those. I'm going to use the hearts. And then I'm going to use this page right here. And this is printed just as it would print. I haven't made any adjustments. I'm going to tear off all the white edges of this. And I'm going to turn these into a little writing spot, like little tags. And this is not my favorite tearing ruler because it's one that has like cork on it and which makes it raised off my page. But if I just turn it over and have the cork up, that really helps. But I got a bad tear there, so I'm just gonna cut that off. And then since I have my scissors out, I was thinking about just um, cutting all of them, but I mean, tearing is so much faster. <laughs> as long as my rulers turn the correct way. So if you have a ruler like this that has cork on one side, just use it this way and you'll get a better tear. It's sometimes hard to find sharp metal rulers now like this. Um, so just a little tip. Okay, so now I'm taking these and I'm simply just folding these in half. And what I loved about these was like that blue and the red and the yellow and white. I thought this would add more color to the page. It's also gonna add like a journaling spot for someone to write in. And it's gonna also have texture because I'm gonna add seam binding at the top of it. I'm gonna turn these into tags, basically. I am distressing these. You don't have to, or you can distress in different colors. And now I'm gonna bring out my same, just simple hole punch and punch some holes. And then of course my reinforcers, and I thought those pink ones would be lovely for this one. And then I'll use the brown for the other. And then I have um, some seam binding from my scrap cabin. And I liked this mint green. I, it just, again, I'm trying to bring in some variation to these pages and bring in like a pop of, of a different kind of color. So uh, that's what had me choose. That's why I chose this color to work with. And I just tie it a little bit on there. And I love the way it kind of flips up and offers a little hidden spot for journaling. 
I made a journal for someone recently and they're like, oh, I would love to use this journal, but I hate my handwriting and I don't even like to see my handwriting. So I don't like to journal anymore. And it made me think more about, you know, creating journals like for people like that, where there's a lot of um, kind of cover up to their handwriting, you know, like private journaling spots, more envelopes, more places like flips and tucks. So think about that depending on, you know, the kind of person that you might be making a junk journal for. I think that's probably a big selling point on a junk journal. If someone doesn't really like their handwriting, but they like to journal, I think a junk journal is kind of perfect in that scenario. So I have, um, obviously just a little bit of scrap left over. So that's what I'm going to grab here and just decorate this little envelope even more. I love the way these two pages came together. You guys like really, really love these. So again, this is a scrap from that first variation that we did. So it fits in there really well width wise, but it was just too tall. And I wanted that top part to show. And then I thought that bottom part that I cut off made a great little journaling card. So I just popped that in that um, top pocket. And there, I love the way that looks and how it kind of brightens up the card a little bit or the page. I did decide, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make this just a journaling spot or an envelope, and I did go ahead and make it an envelope. And then I'm gonna put this little card in it. Um, these printables here, I think are from Tsunami Rose. Um, and I had them printed, I have a huge stack of my printables that I've already printed. And um, they just like jumped right out at me I love that they still have to do with like flowers and harvest and farming, but um, they're still pretty neutral. So I thought that they were the perfect touch for these pages. I always have this acrylic block that has the word journal <laughs> and little stamps just because I like to stamp it in different places. So, you know, I stamped on that scrap and made a little label for that page. Again, these belly bands, I mean, you can just tuck all kinds of things in them. And that just makes me so happy. I love that page so much. I think it's my favorite. Although these next two are pretty fabulous. This is the last variation, you guys. Um, but I pulled out some book pages. You know, you don't have to work with printables. If you have scrapbook paper, use that. If you have book pages, magazines, use those. I thought this image was just really quite cool and I loved the colors and how they kind of went with, you know, these pages I thought so well. So I just tore that. Obviously it's, obviously it's a little short for this page, but I like it because what I have, what I did is I had um, some of those pockets and bands left over that I had cut previously and I turned that into a pocket. So now this page is a double pocket. I want to show you what it would look like if you just use book page. Um, so, you know, maybe you don't have a book page with the really cool image that matches your project. Just use a regular book page that has, you know, a font that you like or text that you like that will work as well gluing around those three sides, creating this pocket. Oh, I just love the way these came together. So now these are double pockets. Once I glue this last little panel on down here. And then, you know, I was definitely in my groove <laughs> by this point. So I decided to make another piece of ephemera to go in the pockets. I have these glassine um, envelopes and I had punched them with my cinch to go into a cinch journal and never used them. And I thought, well, I know these, you know, 
aren't going into a cinch journal now, but I like those holes and I like that those holes are punched in there. So I've got this autumn butterflies and I'm going to put those on the front of the envelopes. And then on the inside, I have this other kit. I think this was a freebie, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can get past freebies from Antonio. Just go and join his Facebook group. Everything's going to be linked down below. Um, and, you know, sign up for his newsletter because he sends them every Friday. And they are fabulous. So now I have these large, beautiful envelopes that are gonna go in my pockets. And I love that the butterflies just kind of peek through. You know, you definitely want to investigate more when you see those just kind of peeking through there. And then I cut, uh, put a couple of tags on that one side. I only put one on this side because I really don't want to obstruct that, the view of that book page and then I put a couple of more um, narrow labels down at the bottom and that is how I completed those two pages only this one I did decide I wanted to bring in an image so I grabbed this one I loved that image of that pumpkin shed and so I'm cutting that out and I'm not going to make it look like a tag obviously I cut off the part that makes it shaped like a tag and I'm just gonna glue this down onto my book page it'll make that book page stronger you know if you wanted to double up your pages for your pockets to reinforce them you could always do that but I like that this is gonna make this a little bit stronger and when it's filled up I just love the way that looks so that's it you guys that is, uh, you know, this mass make that you can do. Again, this is the simple version. You could, you know, print in really neutral papers, make up a bunch of these and just have them available and ready to go into your journals. So I'm gonna pull out my journal here. Now, of course, I feel like these journals are done, but um, I'm gonna find a page here. I want you to see what these, you know, look like in a journal. So you can glue these completely down, you know, or you could just glue on three sides and have like a side pocket for them. Um, I'm sure you can think of even more ideas of how to use them, but I just think it's a great way um, to be ready for white pages. If in, you know, white pages, I don't mind white pages in my journal, but sometimes, I have more than I want. And so I would love to have some of these pre-made just ready to go. And again, if you made these with the belly bands and the pockets in more neutral colors or, you know, colors that you often use, then of course you can mass make these as well and then just fill it with ephemera once you're into making whatever particular journal you're gonna make. I just love this. I love how interactive it is. I love how many different sizes of things I can tuck in there. I just, this is just hands down my favorite version. And the one I would really recommend if you're going to try one out, just go for it. <laughs> and here's the other one with three pockets and our double pocket version. Oh, these are so beautiful. I hope you guys enjoy this idea. I hope you'll put it into practice and use it. Um, go through your scraps. Maybe you have a pile of scraps and see if you can cut them down in a way that you could get a bunch of bases or pockets for bases. And yeah, just love what you got. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for spending your time here with me and I'll catch you next time. Bye.